this morning I thought I would film something that I haven't filmed in maybe years on YouTube I thought I would talk you through I feel like I've actually still got sleep in my eye I haven't filmed one of these in years I'm gonna be showing you my morning routine I feel like I originally shied away from these years back they used to do so well on YouTube like hundreds of thousands of views it was ridiculous and they slowly died out but one of the things that I found really difficult about morning routines was that not everyone has the same morning routine and lots of people would comment being like who is this chick and why does she have so much time in the morning and who has time to do all of that stuff and that elaborate routine I understand and there still will be those people that don't have the same situation as me in the same amount of time because if you have children or you're still going to work then fair play to you but now we're kind of at home together and all in the same boat i thought this would be a good opportunity to talk you through my morning routine which i literally haven't done in years and i have a very solid morning routine now like it's very very easy for me to stick to because me and ryan are quite routine so yeah i'm going to talk you through that first up i thought i'd show you what i'm wearing i literally am so groggy this morning i haven't had coffee yet Ryan's just getting up and then we're going to make coffee and I'm going to show you how we make our coffees. I'm wearing this nasty girl loungewear. Cute coffee maker. <laughs> Oh god, here he is. Yeah, I'm wearing this nasty girl loungewear. I flip between pyjamas. Sometimes I literally just walk around in a bra, but obviously you don't need to see that. So this morning I opted for this cute little loungewear set. And then I normally just pop out here and kind of have a quick tidy up. I still have some bits that I need to like sort out, but I always just like to make it nice and clear, especially on the counters, ready for us to make coffee. If I can, I'll do it the night before, but last night I didn't and I can't. Oh, I wasn't feeling well last night, so that's why. But yeah, we generally get up about... Well, the alarm goes off at 7.30 and sometimes, on a rare occasion, I'll get up bang on 7.30. But what I like about my alarm clock radio is it wakes you up gradually, or it does for me anyway. I feel like Ryan just like is woken up by it and then is like livid because we don't like to wake up in the same way. <laughs> but I like to wake us up kind of like a little bit before we need to be up just because I feel like then by the time I need to be up, I'm like a bit more with it. And then it also gives us time to like chat. And we wouldn't get to do that if I had to like be up and be like, okay, bye, let's go to work now. So yeah, I love doing that. Ryan <laughs> doesn't so much, but it basically plays between 7.30 and 8.30. I kind of gradually wake up somewhere around quarter to eight. So this isn't gonna be in like real time as it would normally this morning because we were in bed chatting for way longer than we would normally be. We generally get up around like eight to 8.30. We were up like before eight yesterday, weren't we? I checked the time and I was like, wow. <laughs> but it's doing bits for me because it means that my coffee is in me before 8am some days which is magical I do make my own coffee by the way sometimes I've made it, I've made, oh, it myself, I made it myself recently <laughs> I'm sure I have I have, yeah. I have footage I actually have actual <laughs> yeah. footage but yeah so we get up make our coffees and that is like how I know I can then start the day. I can't really mentally function without it. I never used to be good at functioning without coffee anyway. I was never a morning person. If you've watched the vlogs for years, I've never been good at speaking in the morning, doing anything in the morning. And coffee actually made me a morning person. Right, so we're gonna make some coffees now. I'm gonna talk you through it. Ryan does this bit with the machine, so he makes the base of the coffee. I used to make instant. Do whatever you prefer, whether you have a coffee machine or not. You can do all of this with instant. Just pour, like put your granules in and pour a tiny bit of water, about this much coffee. And then I add almond milk to it. And so my coffee is like so little water. And I think that's kind of the trick rather than just making like an instant coffee with like instant coffee and hot water. Or just use your coffee machine if you've got one. This is Ryan's coffee machine. Is it DeLonghi? Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. Does the job. It does. Look at him go. He's so precise. We do make a lot of mess doing this. Okay, so coffee how to. I've got my hot coffee in there, which you can leave for a little bit to cool if you want. I've got my ice in my glass. This glass is from Sainsbury's Home. The straw is from Amazon. This is sugar. And then my Outpro almond unsweetened. I saw someone say the other day, I can't remember who it was. They were like, I don't understand people that have almond milk because there's so many ones that are much better, which I feel like Ryan would also agree with. But for anyone that's wondering, I don't love the taste of almond milk because it is obviously less sweet and I'm a very sweet person. Not in terms okay. of personality, just in terms of uh, taste buds, but the calorie content on this is much less. I think there's even, this is the one that you get from like the non-fridge section, but the one you get from the fridge section, I believe has like even less calories per like 100 ml or something like that. And because I like two teaspoons of sugar. I'm just trying to keep like things down, <laughs> you know. You know guys, just trying to be conscious and make it so that my coffee doesn't like account to being like a full meal of my day. So what I generally do is pour my milk into the glass and then pour my coffee in after. And this is just so I don't pour like hot coffee onto the ice and then the ice just melts straight away and you're left with like 
loads of water so this has obviously been in the fridge so it's much cooler and it kind of doesn't like melt the ice immediately before i pour my hot coffee into there i also put two scoops of coffee in the hot coffee just so it kind of i know sugar doesn't really dissolve but just so it kind of like mixes in a little bit better and then i pour that in here apparently i said two scoops of coffee in the hot coffee i meant sugar my god i can't do filming without coffee coffee this is the finished product i love the way when you have milk in it and then you pour the coffee and it all kind of like starts sinking it's really pleasing to me so at this point or even before you can add any syrups you want i'll link different syrups that i've used in the info box i almost want to say the comments i also sometimes use different spreads so i've got like a caramel dipping sauce in my fridge that needs using up so some days i use that some days i use like i've got a hazelnut chocolate spread so you can really like play about with coffees and do whatever you want and make them really really delicious or you can just like have them without sugar which i feel like ryan does is that what you do i'm about to add sugar right now oh no you have one sugar don't you i have one if it's hot but if it's iced then i like to add two Ooh. And I have the second sugar when it's cold so that it stays all like gritty. This is why when I make you coffee, I always ask. I sound like I don't know because I don't. I do change because it. Because yeah. I never know. Cheers. <laughs> So I've changed into my gym kit and I'm going to be doing a mixture of like maybe some yoga bits but mostly focusing on strength training this morning because I haven't done it in a couple of days and I just really feel like that is something that my body really needs right now. Yeah just because I'm not out and about doing stuff like normally I'm carting suitcases around in my everyday life and like lifting quite a lot of stuff so I just really want to focus on strength training just so I don't kind of lose that. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing this morning. I'm wearing my girlfriend cycle shorts and then this little bra from, it was from M&S, but I'm pretty sure Lululemon do something like this that actually looks cuter and I'm tempted by it. Lauren, <laughs> Lauren found the link for it and I was like, I want to buy that. And then I was like, this is the problem with the linking of things for the info boxes. I just want to buy everything. Anyway, that's what I'm going to be doing. This is my favourite workout outfit at the moment. It's so cute. So, so cute. I wish I didn't look like such a potato, but I wanted this to be a realistic morning routine and I do not put makeup on to work out unless I'm doing it like later on and I'm already wearing makeup and it needs to be on my face for whatever reason. So yeah, I'm gonna do that and then I'll meet you in the bathroom. We're running a lot later than we would normally be at this point purely because filming i can't film everything as i would normally because i need like no like noise and ryan makes his breakfast with the nutribullet and stuff like that so we've kind of been like working around each other a little bit normally this would be happening at around 9 30 i want to say i want to keep this really realistic i'd love to say 9 9 30. on a normal day if i wasn't like in this weird situation that we're all in right now lauren normally comes through the door at nine and i'm normally like mid doing my makeup but obviously 
time's different now. So yeah, about 9.30 at the moment is when I start doing my skincare and my makeup. My life is just a little bit more like of a slower pace now. Just making the most of that really. So yeah, showered skincare is my next port of call. And lots of you will know my morning skincare, but I thought I'd take you through it in this video anyway for those of you that aren't familiar or just want a little bit of a refresh. So I start off by using my Oskia Renaissance Cleansing Gel. This is a fave of mine. I use this morning and evening. I apply this onto my dry face, which horrifies some people, but I love a little bit of grip when I am cleansing and I obviously get my face a little bit more wet later but I just find this really like feels like it's thoroughly cleansing my skin and throughout my morning routine at the moment because I have a little bit more time I really like to kind of take a moment to give my face like a full massage so you'll see me kind of like do different things at different stages of my morning routine where I just kind of like stand rubbing my face it's quite nice it's like quite therapeutic but yeah, I love this cleanser my skin just doesn't look right if I use any other cleanser like even after I use like an oil cleanser in the evening to like annihilate my makeup and just like break it all down if I were to double cleanse with that oil cleanser my skin would not look as good as it does if I do one oil cleanse and then one cleanse with the Oskia Renaissance gel. It's just so good. It makes my skin literally glow and look so healthy. By the way, I've also changed my hair. If anyone's noticed, my hair looks different. Purely because I freshly washed it last night and I'm trying to get it set into some kind of parting because before I had it just kind of like all pulled back and I want to do my hair this morning. I let it dry wet last night. I'm trying to use less heat and in that I'm kind of just removing the hair drying part but still straightening because wavy and curly haired girls will know that it's just not worth trying to live with wavy or curly hair because you can't brush it you can't do anything and it's just an absolute nightmare so you do kind of have to do a certain level of heat styling especially when it's short if it was longer this would be a whole different kettle of fish but yeah so i slept with it wet and i'm just trying to get it set in some kind of parting that isn't like wild and then i'm just removing that with a wet face halo lots of people use face halos in different ways i kind of use them in place of a flannel so i still use cleanser with them i know some people just like don't use cleanser and kind of treat them like a cotton pad that doesn't need wetness. I just don't think that works with like the level of dirt that I feel is on my face. I don't feel like my, I would ever feel like my face is thoroughly clean. So yeah, cleanser and face halo together. Once I've cleansed, I'm going to use the Herbivore Rose Face Mist. Spray on that is powerful. But yeah, I've really come to love this. I haven't always been one for hydrating toners, but I'm just really seeing the benefits of it at the moment. My skin is just so much more hydrated, especially with the product combination that I've been using. I think it all really helps to look it in. So next we have the Oskia Super C, the Super C Vitamin Capsules? Super C Smart Nutrient Beauty Capsules. I have a fresh pot of this, which I'm so excited about. By the way, if anyone gets a close up of my nails and you think that they look a bit weird, it's because they've got purple stains on them. I did a purple shampoo last night. Not that you would tell because my hair is just yellow AF, but it stained my nails purple. The things I never knew about until I actually took my acrylic nails off because I've never had to deal with that issue before. So this comes in a little like biodegradable capsule and you just twist the end off and then I just kind of like squat it directly onto my face rather than just putting it loads onto my hand I just feel like I like that direct application so then I just rub that all in and this is another moment that I like to take to give my face a really good massage so I have rose quartz face roller I don't know how much face rollers like really do I feel like they I see a difference but then I'm like am I imagining this is this my brain telling me that it's making a difference because i want it to so i'm going to show you what i do now because for some reason i normally do it at this step rather than later down the skincare line so you can do this with your hands as well sometimes i do it with my hands so i like to i think it's this way i like to is it no this way yeah so i kind of just do that along my jaw over and over and over and then just kind of do my regular massaging on my face but with this i start on my neck and on each side, I like to do like 10 upward rolls, roughly. I'm not counting right now because I'm talking to you and I'm distracted. But when I pay attention to this, that's the kind of thing that I would do. And then I just go along my jawline, like the underneath and then around the side. You get the gist and just kind of work my way up. I use this little bit for under my cheekbone and then also like around here. This also really reminds me of how much tension I have in my jaw. I try not to put too much pressure on it with this because I don't want to like mess my face up but I, I feel the tension when I like roller the thing over it so it kind of reminds me to like unclench which is quite good I don't know I really feel like this makes such a difference to my jawline I should have done a before and after this kind of is the before and after because I haven't done this side but obviously no sides 
are exactly the same to someone's face but i feel like it makes such a difference so it really helps to like de-puff and get rid of all the there's a chemical which is what makes your face puffy overnight and i just feel like this really helps to like get rid of it because apparently a lot of like your jaw double chinness not all of it because you can get like tech neck and stuff like that but sometimes double chinniness around your jaw is actually like water retention i don't know how true that is but that's what i read that made me like start really getting into this and i do this daily now don't do it at night i feel like lots of people do it at night and that sounds really appealing to me but i just always forget because my brain in the evening is like oh I can't function before coffee and i can't function in the evening basically i have a limited amount of time in the day when i get everything done Really, it's a miracle that I'm as productive as I am. Yeah, that's kind of what we're looking like. I'd love to know if this actually makes a difference. So I'm gonna do the other side of my face now. If you are a beauty therapist of some kind or a scientist, or I don't know, those are cool jobs. <laughs> I either will do. I would love to know the science behind this. Does it work? Please tell me, because apparently I'm lazy and can't be bothered to research it myself. And I just like when you guys teach me things as well. I really love it. Okay. So now I'm using the Tan Lux Hyaluronic Face Serum. God, I'll show you in a second. I've left it over there because I always find it so hard to apply anything with a pipette on camera when I don't have a table in front of me. That goes over whole face and neck. I've also been using the body version of it, which has just come out on my body at night. I also get a brush and put it on my hands as well. It works beautifully. I'm so, so happy. I finally found something that makes my hands look like they have a natural turn. I say that's probably like, yeah, I've got one tiny little. But most things either end up really streaky or just really dark, like too dark. It takes too well and then it looks like you fake turned your hands. But this, apart from that tiny little mark, you would never know. It looks so natural. So I'm really loving that just because it's kind of stopped me from needing to tan so far this week. I haven't done my Bondi midweek top up so i'm gonna do like a full tan this weekend because i need to like exfoliate but yeah it's a good little product so yeah super glow hyaluronic self-tan serum there we go and then we have the body version i love it, it smells so good as well so good so that is almost it for skincare i don't think i'm gonna do spf this morning i'm not i don't feel like i'm needing to venture out i also i'm not super happy with my spf at the moment i don't know if i'd recommend it's the garnier i'm using this spf 50 just to give me a little bit more like protection I'm not sure if my skin is like fully agreeing with it because it has been a little bit more blemishy but i've got another one that one's going down and then an identical one popped up next to it i was like can you not it's like when you get what is it a chicken cottage pop up next to a kfc and you're like well that's really unnecessary really unnecessary anyway i'm applying this to my hand and i forgot to tell you what it's called this is the allies of skin molecular multi-nutrient day cream i'm loving this and i'm never particularly loyal to a day cream i just normally have thought they're quite pointless but this one i actually really enjoy using and i barely have to use any so this this is mostly going to go on my neck i barely use any of it on my face because a little bit goes such a long way it's gorgeous i think especially with these products the combination just works beautifully so i've got quite a bit and i just mostly put that on my neck because i love moisturizing my neck i think it's quite important to not like forget about it next nice and moisturized and then i just smooth that into my skin again giving the face like a very <laughs> slightly aggressive massage but I love it, it feels so good. So yeah, that is where we're at after skincare. If you could just disappear, I would be so happy with my skin right now. Right. I don't put all of this on my face, by the way. This looks insane, but this is just, this is a lot of makeup. Most of it's barely being worn at the moment, it's very sad. Actually, most of it's just lip products, to be honest. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the By Terry Brightening CC Serum. This is in the shade Sunny Flash. If you're a regular YouTube watcher, a regular Lala? A regular you i can't say it, a regular youtube watcher you will know all about this because everyone uses it because it's great i love this it just adds such a lovely bronze to my skin it just makes it look so healthy it looks crazy at first when you start applying it it just settles and looks gorgeous on the skin gives the most incredible glow this is the oscar cc beauty capsules are the two products that i would say over the past couple of months have made me comfortable not in a full face of makeup like the oscar cc capsules give you such a good glow that i don't always want to put makeup on over the top so unless i am working like having a full like filmy vloggy day i don't bother because i just love how the vitamin c capsules 
make my skin look they make it look incredible so i don't like to waste it i feel like i like to let it do its full thing but they're also gorgeous under makeup which is why they're just such a bad product and you can use them in the evening they're just amazing but yeah this for in terms of wearing makeup and just feeling more comfortable with my blemishes especially when i'm on camera this has just been my everything I love it. I could happily go about my day right now. I'm not going to. I'm going to do my full makeup routine with you because I've been promising to do it for so long. And I woke up this morning. I was like, I need to film a video today. I need to show you guys my makeup routine. So it's worth noting that after the By Terry serum, I wash my hands because I've used the Tan Lux Hyaluronic Serum. And then I've also used that and I've used my hands to apply it. And those two are a bad combination on your hands because one is going to get foundation like fingerprints everywhere. And the other is going to like tan your hands and make them orange. But anyway, I'm going to be using the Kevin Aucoin Foundation Balm, which you will have heard me talk about if you've been watching these videos a lot recently because I've been loving this and I'm going to show you why. So I literally like take a little bit onto my brush. This is a matte 130S, I want to say. I'll link it. Uh, I literally stipple it over my blemishes. So you can use this kind of as a foundation or a concealer. I pack it on my blemishy areas and then just apply a light amount in any other areas where I need it, like my chin. I've just got it on my lip. Oh, so I just apply a really light dusting on my chin because for, for some reason I just always feel like my makeup looks better when my chin is like flawless. I don't know. And then I apply a lighter amount over this side of my face because it's currently quite blemish free and I don't want to like clog it up unnecessarily. A light amount around my nose. Do under my eyes as well. This is all I've been using under my eyes. Just gorgeous. It is one of those really nice like no makeup makeup products but it also works for a full face of glam as well. I just honestly haven't used anything else in so long now. So yeah then I just do a light dusting over my forehead because it has such a lovely glow that I don't like to take away from it and it does kind of set quite matte but if you use a small amount your glow still shines through but you get the flawless like blurring effect that this comes with and it's just gorgeous and then I just take a really light amount and I normally use it around here I can't see my scarring at the moment so I can't be like pinpoint exact I always have like scarring around here and I just use it along my jawline basically to cover that scarring also normally have a blemish here and here i think it's from where my hair like stops me clearing off my cleanser i've been trying to be really like good with that lately that's kind of where we're at just nice and light apart from here where i don't want to be nice and light i want to cover that bad boy up because it's just there okay next i always apply contour i just think it adds more definition back into my face which sometimes applying like a foundation can kind of take out. I think sometimes that's why I try and be quite light with it because I find otherwise it takes away the definition. Always a little bit on my jaw. Just find it blends everything, like ties everything in nicely together. Just take it on my neck. So I kind of sweep this in a straight line. You've probably seen me do this about 300,000 times before if you are a regular watcher. And I'm so sorry. And then I kind of take it up like that. I don't know why I'm just really enjoying that at the moment. I think it's giving my face just a really nice shape. And sometimes I just literally, like if I'm having a more minimal makeup day, I will blend this out, like really, really blend it out so it's super, super soft and just leave it and then like carry on with my life and just leave my brows and my eyes. Today I'm gonna be most likely bronzing over the top because this is a bit more of a natural definition for me, like a very natural shade. It's not super, super dark and super warm really once I've blended it out because I do blend it out a fair bit. So I like to go in over the top with a powder and just make everything a little bit more intense and just give myself a lot more of a bronzy glow at the moment. I love a bronzy glow, it just makes me feel so nice and fresh. And that contour on my nose always makes such a difference. If I don't contour my nose, I'm like, what the hell is going on? I've been doing it for years in different capacities, but I always enjoy just like adding bronzer to my nose even if I'm not contouring and I've also just been taking the contour like a little bit further down my nose and just been sweeping it over this area for a more like sun-kissed vibe I really like that in like the spring and summer so yeah as you can see it still looks like it looks like I'm wearing makeup but it's not too intense and I could like forego brows and eye makeup and just have beautiful skin like you could stop this makeup look at any point I feel like and by this point we're actually almost done I've got eyes brows and then a little bit of lip product and then if you fancy blush Okay, so now I'm going to be taking one of my bronzers. This is the Natasha Denona 
contour sculpting powder and this is quite an ashy cool toned bronzer i would say i'm taking it on a zoeva 227 soft definer brush and what i've been using this for is not my bronzer for once i used to use this for bronzer all the time but more recently i've been using it just on my eyes because so my bronzer that i've been going for is actually a little bit softer and a little bit warmer much more summer appropriate this is more like my winter bronzer so i sweep that over my crease and kind of out here and this is kind of playing into that like very tiktoky like fox eye trend i love it but i just cba to go heavy on my makeup at the moment like i've ditched liner for a little bit just because i don't know this just feels like quite fresh i did it one day just because i couldn't be bothered to do a full face of makeup and i wanted to be camera ready quick and I was like, actually, this looks really nice. So yeah, I shape up my crease, like so. And then I also add the bronzer to my eyelid as well. I don't go right into the inner corner. I leave that because I think it helps to, my eyes are quite like closely set, I think. I don't know, it's probably me being really overly critical of my face. I like to put more on this part of my face just so it kind of like brings it all out a little bit and elongates the eye. And because I've got dark eyes, I don't really like to make them look too dark i feel like if you have blue eyes this would be gorgeous all the way in and maybe a little bit warmer so yeah just do that very softly i tried this with a warmer shadow the other day uh max soft brown and i didn't like it i really like the cool tonedness of it i think it ties in with my skin really well but also makes my eyes pop a little bit more i guess because they're quite dark the cool tone just works a little bit better like i always find a cool toned like lilac or a grayish always kind of makes them pop as well so yeah that is it for my eyes i'm not going underneath or anything at the moment and then i'm going to add mascara this is the bare minerals lash topia this is on its last legs but it works quite well for when you're going for a more minimal eye look because you don't get a ton of product on the lashes so it's been quite like a really cute natural flutter this is so hard to do on camera Fortunately, that rubbed off. I'm out of cotton buds as well, so that would have been a disaster. And as always with my lashes at the moment, I go right into the inner corner, just so they look super soft and fluttery. I really like to get all of those little ones. And sometimes I just add a tiny bit just to these outer lashes. I don't want to do it the whole way around because I don't want to like drag the eyes down, but I find that just that's a really nice little bit of definition okay my shower has just like randomly started dripping so i'm just gonna have to try and talk over it it literally sounds like it's raining in here stop it right i've either stopped it or i've made it worse who knows i'm just gonna add my bronzer now normally i would do this kind of at the end of my makeup but yesterday i did it and i actually like interfered with my eye makeup a little bit because i was being really like haphazard with it <laughs> the things i do when i'm not on camera so for fear of that happening again today i really hate messing my makeup on camera it's just like it's just there so i'm just going to apply my bronzer now this is max give me some which i've been using if you've been watching my youtube channel i've been using this i think since my youtube channel started i love it it's a very orangey bronzer but if you have the kind of skin tone that can take it or you just love an orangey bronzer in general like whatever your pref i highly recommend it it's great and it sets your makeup as well i think it's actually more of a setting powder mineralized skin finish yeah but I think most people use them as bronzers now. Back in the day, it was a bit of a like, ooh, but now I'm pretty sure everyone uses this as a bronzer. I'm not gonna do cream blush today just because that's those spots are like quite big and it's just really annoying like having to kind of like aggravate them whilst buffing in a cream blush. So I'm not too worried about the fact that I haven't done blush yet. But normally I would have to do my blush and then do this and then maybe put a little bit more on top. All bronzed face matches chest great okay now for brows i'm using the anastasia dip brow pomade in ash brown and i swear my brow makeup oh my god this is gonna be so hard to do in this tiny viewfinder my brow makeup is just getting more and more minimal <laughs> as the days go on one thing i found with the way i wear my makeup and have been wearing my makeup since like last summer is i don't lean towards a bold brow so much like sometimes i do it but they're just kind of getting more and more minimal as time goes on because my eye makeup isn't so bold anymore so i can go for a softer brow which is lovely i think sometimes when you go for like quite a bold eye look you then look a bit like 90s if you don't do your eyebrows do you know what i mean does anyone else know what i mean so yeah it's been quite nice to be able to go for a softer brow I think it's quite fresh i don't know i've said that some people might be like your brows still look really bold to me hun but we all know what my brows used to look like so so just kind of softly filled those in i don't know they look a lot more bold than i was anticipating but they always do on camera and then i'm just setting them using my l'oreal brow artist 
lumper. I don't know if they still make this. I'm not sure. If it is still on sale, I will link it. But this kind of ties everything in nicely and basically just makes it look like I haven't really filled them in. It makes them look a lot more natural rather than they've obviously been penciled in. You can kind of tell, but it's just not as obvious. So yeah, and I brush them up so it just looks all nice and soft and fluffy and I really love that look. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of blush. This is by Dior, but any pink blush will do. And I just swell that quite concentrated in the center of my cheeks, like the apples of my cheeks. And then my circles get like bigger. So it kind of like blends out and diffuses. And I really like that. I think it just makes the blush look a bit more like a natural flush. That's kind of what we're going for. And then I add a little bit to my nose as well. And a little bit to my temples just to add some color back into my face because I find after I use so much brown on my face, you just need to add a little bit more color back in and I love the way that looks. Okay, so I'm gonna talk you through my lipstick roster because I have quite a few things that I kind of combine together, use on their own, that kind of thing. And I'm always asked what is on my lips. And more often than not at the moment, it is this lipstick, which is the KKW Beauty 90s Supermodel. This lip crayon by George Armani is kind of like an okay, like alternative, but obviously it's not matte. So you'd have to use a tissue to like matte it down, but that is the kind of similarity that we're looking at. The matte is obviously a bit more pigmented, but it's a good dupe. And this is also what I use on my cheeks as well. So ooh, it's nice and multifunctional. I also use this lipstick by MAC that is a, also a very good dupe, a bit more cool toned, which is Trey Blase 404. It's the Love Me lipstick. I bought this when Ryan and I went to Ibiza for the first time together last summer. So I just love this, the Mems. It's cute. Again, not matte, so you don't get the same effect. I find that matte lipsticks make your lips look much bigger. And I obviously overline them a lot as well. So I just find that matte ties in nicely, kind of makes them look a lot fuller. And in terms of overlining, I've got three options here. Two are KKW Beauty that I mix together. To be honest, I always mix this with one of these two. So this is KKW Beauty Nude 0.5 lip liner and then I've got nude one lip liner and then a good dupe for that is the Charlotte Tilbury lip cheat in what's the shade iconic nude iconic nude this is a bit more warm toned I would say but a very good dupe and I'm sorry for mentioning so much KKW Beauty because number one you have to ship from the US and the shipping charges are very annoying if you're in the UK and also they're not shipping at the moment because their warehouse is closed down so I'm really sorry I don't think you can get your hands on these right now but they are great and if you do want to get your hands on them I would highly recommend because I really love them I'm going to be making another order soon because as you can see nude one lipstick is just getting smaller and smaller so yeah I kind of use a combination of all of these sometimes I mix them today I think I'm going to do Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude I need to sharpen this hold on Hold please. So, kind of quite softly overline my lips. Like that. I concentrate a lot more on the Cupid's bow at the top. So yeah, you can't really tell that it makes a massive difference until I've done the full thing and then you're like oh yeah that does make a massive difference. And this kind of acts as a shadow as well, makes it look so much more full. And then I always make my top lip a bit darker for some reason i leave this one a little bit lighter it just makes my bottom lip look more full my bottom lip is much fuller than my top anyway so i just have started exaggerating that it's something i always used to feel really weird about when i was younger and now i'm just like make it bigger so yeah that's kind of what we're looking at with and without i just like to kind of blend that a little bit just to soften it so i've just popped a little bit of the giorgio armani what are these called so small color sketcher shade a i popped a little bit of that on first and then i'm gonna go over with the kkw bt lipstick just so it feels a bit more comfortable i'm gonna really blend that top lip out i might even go back over it with a bit of lip liner because it's a bit pinkier than i'd like yeah that's kind of my everyday i can't be bothered but i want to be on camera and i want to look nice makeup glam and i really do love it it is really nice i feel very very comfortable in it my skin looks really lovely everything's just very even but still quite minimal and fresh and i just love that so yeah that is it for my makeup and my skincare i hope you enjoyed that and i hope it was useful for you and answered some of your questions because i get so many questions on my makeup routine at the moment so yeah hope you enjoyed that let's go get dressed what that noise is the distant sound of ryan making us tea what a gem anyway let's get dressed if you haven't seen my winter to summer wardrobe reorganization then i will link that below for you i highly recommend watching it such a great video i really enjoyed filming it but this is what my summer wardrobe is kind of shaping up to look like and today I'm, i fancy wearing like a cute summer dress because 
I'm in the house and I'm in the house board. And uh, yeah, I really wanna make the most out of my summer wardrobe. One thing I've really been enjoying is that I don't have to worry about the weather. So I can wear all of my summer dresses that quite a lot of the time I wouldn't get to wear. And I'd have to like go to London and be very weather appropriately dressed. I love not having to dress weather appropriately. It's making me so happy. So obviously the world is kind of like in a very bad place right now, but I'm taking the little joys that I can. And I'm wearing lots of my old summer dresses, lots of the summer dresses that I've bought. I'm just really getting the wear out of everything. So I'm just really trying to make a silver lining, but it is pleasing me a lot. I love summer dresses. They just really lift my mood. So that is one of the things that I'm doing at the moment every morning, even if I only wear it for like two, three hours, just to really lift my mood. And then I'll be back in sweats in the afternoon, but I love it. It just makes me feel so good. So positive, so happy. So I wore this one yesterday, so I don't think I'm gonna wear that again today. I'm tempted by this old H&M dress, which I was so excited that I found. I thought I didn't have it anymore because it didn't used to fit me. I used to think, oh, this just doesn't look as good on me as it used to. And now it like looks nice. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, it was just that it didn't fit. Right, cool. But I'm also tempted by this. That color. It's lovely. Oh, there's my ASOS. This is current stock. I love this so much. Periwinkle blue, according to the comments. Thank you very much. Love that. I love the comments section of my videos at the moment. I feel like we all like learn things or I learn things. It's, it's great. I just love it. I also need to decide what I'm going to do with my hair as well. I reckon down, straightened, little bob. Be cute. Oh, my pink H&M dress. We'll see. You'll find out in a minute. So I think this is going to be today's outfit choice. This is a H&M dress. It's so cute. It is a little bit long on me, which I don't really mind. But just to give it a little bit more shape, I've just popped a black belt around the waist. And I think it ties it all in really nicely. This would look so cute with black boots as well. I have to give credit to Nadia, who I feel like I mention in every vlog at the moment, but I've been loving her content in the recent weeks. She had this dress on in a video and I just absolutely loved it. So I ordered this when I ordered a few other H&M dresses. If you want to see the other ones that I've ordered, I've done a video. So I'll link that below in the info box for you. I keep going to say in the comments this morning. But yeah, it's such a lovely dress. It's really, really cute. And I think it's a nice one to toughen up because you will see in the other video without the belt, it is very like soft and floaty and I think that it just looks amazing with like a black belt and then like a black pair of sandals or a pair of like Chloe Susanna boots I'll show you those they would look great how cute I really love these boots I will never get rid of them partly because they're named after me but also because they work really really well in the summer with dresses and things like that and I think they tie in really well with the belt so yeah that's my OOTD not that I need shoes on I ain't going anywhere so Ryan has made me a cup of tea which I am so ready to tuck into, tuck into, yeah, we'll go with that. And I'm finally ready to start my day a little bit later than normal, but it's fine. I've got some emails to do today. I need to send Lauren a ton of footage and prep next week's video, which I'm really, really excited about. So excited about. Oh, I thought I'd show you my jewelry actually before I go. I was gonna show you in the next vlog, but I have quite a few bits to show you in the next vlog, but I'll show you my jewelry that I'm wearing and um, because you've seen like the outfit details, but I haven't actually told you about my jewelry. So I'm wearing a Dior friendship bracelet. Lauren has the other one. And then I've got some new rings on. Basically my favorite rings, I get asked about all the time. And one is Olivia Burton. It's lovely, but I wash my hands so much and I've been quite lazy, admittedly during lockdown. And I've been washing my hands with my jewelry on a lot more than I would normally. Normally I would only do it if I'm like, you know, if you go into a public restroom and I don't want to take my rings off in a public restroom because I will probably leave them there. So I'll like wash my hands then, but I always make sure like my rings are dried thoroughly. I never would do it otherwise. During lockdown, I've been so lazy because I have to wash my hands so much. I love wearing jewelry. I love wearing jewelry, especially with my nails looking like this. It's so important to me that my hands feel nice in another way because I spend so much time looking at them. So <laughs> admittedly, I have ruined that ring because um, I don't think it's sterling silver. This ring, I always get asked questions about as well. It doesn't fit on that finger, but let me show you. I'm trying to hide my nails as much as possible. But yeah, my nan got me this when I was about 13, I think, because she used to always give me rings. And I remember there was coming a point when they would only fit on this finger. And then the kids at school were like, why are you doing that? you're not married and I was like well obviously I'm 13 but my <laughs> but I told my nan just like as a joke and then she took me out and bought me a new one which is so sweet of her so I always keep that one I love it because it reminds me of her and I have all of my like tiny weeny ones in a jewelry box but I don't like wearing it so much because I'm scared that I'm gonna lose it and it's not particularly like super expensive I don't think but it's just like a bit of her and I love her so I don't want to like lose it so I picked up a few more rings which I'm very excited to show you I've absolutely ruined the little squishy bit in this and I've had it for like two minutes but keeping my old rings 
in here and then I have a few new rings two of which I'm already wearing I've been wearing since I got up this morning I just kind of pop them on when I go into the bathroom I pop out my retainer and pop on my rings so I thought I'd show you these these are all from Pandora and they are just so gorgeous so I wanted to go for something that had like a similar look to this so I've picked up this really gorgeous ring how gorgeous is that just love it i've also picked up this teardrop one i just love the shape it's so beautiful and then i picked up this which is very similar to my one from olivia burton unfortunately i think i got it in the same size as all the others i'm going to double check on my order but it's actually slightly smaller than the rest of them the rest of them all fit on this finger but that one is the only one that doesn't but i'm not so mad to be honest because it means that i can wear a ring on that finger and i didn't have one for that so not the end of the world but then i have these two rings so as you can see they are actually separate and they're both this kind of like almost v shape and one has the little diamond attached to the top and then i've got this other one which works as the perfect accent ring to all of these like this top one just works perfectly with all of my rings so i got that one because i thought it was just like the perfect one to stack with all of these so yeah that's what i'm wearing today but i'm really enjoying the fact that i can kind of switch it all out and mix and match them so yeah that's my kind of little mini jewelry collection at the moment i've not been wearing earrings too much i tend to just wear a giant hoop earrings when i've got like no makeup on and a Fun because I just love that vibe. I will always love that vibe. Hoop earrings and no makeup is like my favorite thing. It still makes me feel like a boss, even though I'm just like chill. But yeah, I think that is everything you need to know about my jewelry, makeup routine, skincare routine. You've had another workout today, my coffee recipe. I feel like I've just rounded it up. So many questions that you guys always ask me in one video. So super successful morning so far. So yeah, I'm gonna go continue hopefully having at least a mildly productive afternoon. I will probably like, it'll be a downhill slope from here. So yeah, I'm gonna love you and leave you. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are looking forward to the next video because I am so excited for the next video. I have some things I'm really excited to show you and talk to you about and yeah, I hope you're all having the best day and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.